talk about herbs. My name is Heather Luna, and I'm an herbalist. Herbs have become so popular in today's healthcare climate that I feel it's important to start talking about them with the same seriousness that we talk about any medication. What often doesn't cross the minds of most people of who use herbs is that just because they're natural doesn't mean that they can't have side effects. Herbs are not always safe, and in fact, there are a number of cases where they can cause harm. Let me give you some examples. Someone is complaining of fatigue, and they want to take herbs that will increase their energy. If they don't address the reasons they feel tired to begin with and just take the adaptogen or energy tonic herbs, they will continue the same habits that got them feeling tired in the first place. This is simply masking the symptoms and not addressing the root cause. Very often, people who feel tired are just not getting enough sleep. And rather than taking an herb that boosts energy, what they should be doing is looking for methods to help them get that eight hours of sleep each night. When they just go for herbs like ginseng without changing their sleep routine, it causes more serious health issues to arise down the road. You can see how taking an herb that boosts energy can actually cause a sleepless person more harm. Let's look at another example of someone who's experiencing a digestive complaint, such as reoccurring heartburn. Taking a demulcent herb like slippery elm bark can totally correct the acid indigestion, but what it doesn't do is prevent future reoccurrences because herbs alone won't address the root cause. Most commonly, acid reflux is caused by consuming an irritating food. Simply taking an herb to turn off the symptom is not a complete healing strategy. It allows the person to continue eating the same foods that caused the problem in the first place. And then they just take the herb to mask the symptom. If they continue this pattern, it will increase their risks of more serious digestive problems long term. Eventually, another symptom will arise and exacerbate their whole condition. So as you can see, when we simply take herbs and plug them into our typical modern medical mindset, we end up with a really skewed sense of how to help people, as if taking an herb in place of a drug will help us to achieve our health goals. This is not at all how herbs are used according to traditional systems of medicine. And the safest way to use an herb is in the context of an overall holistic therapeutic strategy. My goal today is to give you an idea of what a good therapeutic strategy looks like and introduce you to a principle called vitalism. Vitalism is a philosophy. It's rooted in the notion that there is a vital force that animates all life. Vital meaning essential. Or in other words, life can't happen without it. Some of the things that are essential to life are things like food, air, water, sleep, movement, love, purpose. But what we're talking about here is a substance that governs all of that. In the Far East, it's called chi. In India, it is known as the breath of life. The ancients all knew that the secret to health was a cultivation of life force, and that illness is certainly a lack of it. What is less commonly known is that the roots of Western herbalism, which is most commonly used in America today, branch from Greek Arabic medicine. And the translation for life force in this system is known as the healing power of nature. The human body is designed to heal itself by the laws of nature. When the skin is cut, it heals all on its own. When a bone is broken, it knits itself back together. This is life force in action. The simplest way to describe it is that life force is the thing that animates the living body and defines the difference between a living being and a lump of anatomical parts. This concept is important because it is the basis for creating a healing strategy that is effective and long lasting. The vitalist principle implies that nature has an intelligence of its own and that if we give the body what it needs, it has the ability to heal itself. According to every ancient system of medicine, it is this life force that does the healing work, not the herbs and definitely not the practitioner, no matter how much they'd like you to think so. So when we apply herbs or any other healing strategy, the goal is to increase vitality and work with what the life force is already trying to do. This often means supporting the symptoms rather than suppressing them. Feeling tired is the vital force telling the body to lay down, rest, take a nap, sleep longer. Suppressing the symptoms of fatigue only drives the body to experience deeper levels of malaise that eventually lead to burnout. 
So here we have a clear example of the body telling us what it needs, and all we have to do is listen and follow its lead. The vitalist strategy is to support rather than suppress. It is sort of a work with rather than a force over approach, which can be applied to nearly any condition or set of disease symptoms. When you have a cough, think of what the body is trying to do. It is trying to get something up and out. A cough is naturally expelling bacteria and clearing the respiratory tract. It is counterproductive to try and suppress this function by turning the symptom off. To work with a cough from a vitalist approach would be to get, take herbs that are expectorants, the herbs that up, increase this action of up and out. Um, and they help to clear the respiratory tract of any infection that may be settling in. Taking a cough suppressant, which is more common, <laughs> uh, turns off the coughing reflux and halts bacteria from being expelled which can increase the risk of more serious infection. So then something that's just annoying, like a cough, can turn into something more serious, like pneumonia. Vitalist principles teach us that the symptom is actually the thing that's doing the healing, and not the disease that needs to be cured. In truth, a symptom is most often life power's best attempt to heal the body like the cough clearing out bacteria to prevent infection, or feeling tired as a means to encourage a state of rest and recovery. One of the best examples I can give you here is a fever. A fever is the body's natural method of fighting infection. Most viruses and bacteria cannot survive in high temperatures. The range of a fever between 100 and 106 degrees can kill most viral infections. Here's an example of where the symptom is the healing mechanism. We can suppress the vital force by turning off the fever with antipyretic substances, or we can support this natural infection fighting process with the use of diaphoretics. And these are herbs that increase sweating and detoxification, and they ultimately help the fever to do its job better. And they also allow some relief and comfort to the patient. I would like to note that there are plenty of herbs that are antipyretics, <laughs> so it's not just drugs. Uh, a common one would be willow bark, um, but a typical diaphoretic, a good one to know, is elderflower. I've seen numerous cases where turning off a fever has resulted in an illness lasting months longer and with more complicated symptoms than if the fever had been allowed to run its course. So here's the long and the short of it. When we chronically suppress an acute illness, we create chronic disease. Turning a symptom off without addressing its root cause is like pulling the batteries out of a smoke detector while the fire is still burning. You may no longer hear the alarm, but the room is still filled with smoke. As an herbalist, I see herbs used to suppress illnesses all the time. It's an allopathic approach, just using herbs instead of drugs. We can substitute the herbs for pharmaceuticals and still get the same negative effects long term. Today, we have so many medicines to choose from, it has become standard practice to look at the side effects and contraindications before selecting a prescription. But not too many people do this when it comes to herbs. We really need to start taking these cautions into consideration with our plant medicines too. Think about what are the side effects of taking too much turmeric or frankincense or whatever the latest fat herb is. Seriously consider asking a qualified herbalist if you don't know where to look for this information. The traditional herbalist has been outlawed in much of modern medicine, and yet herbs are consumed more today than they have been in the last hundred years. People always say to consult your doctor before taking a medication, but it is far less common to consult an herbalist before taking an herb. Taking herbs short term to manage symptoms while exploring the root cause is an ideal approach. But we have to remember that more is not better and taking too much is where we run into trouble. I can tell you that slippery elm bark is wonderful for digestive inflammation, but taking too much too often can actually lead to malabsorption. A person who chronically suppresses their heartburn with this herb will invariably end up with a nutritional deficiency due to the slower metabolism that it brings. This relatively benign herb slows digestion when taken habitually, and it can lead to a whole host of new symptoms when the tissues and organs are not receiving the nutritional building blocks that they need to function properly. Ultimately, heartburn is the body's way of saying, hey, there's a food here that is not working for you, and your best strategy is to identify that food and remove it from your diet. 
Vitalism as a healing strategy is teaching us to stop doing the thing that's causing the fire. Thinking like a vitalist prevents us from making some tragic health mistakes. Not only is nature designed to heal itself, but the expression of life becomes stronger in the healing process. A bone that's broken is healed stronger than it was before. A wound that develops a scar is stronger tissue than it was before. Every time we get a cold or a flu, the immune system becomes upregulated, bringing us to stronger resistance against infectious diseases. So perhaps the next time you come down with a symptom, you might think of what the vital ecology of your body is trying to do. And rather than taking an approach to simply turn it off, perhaps you will take a vitalist approach and devise a strategy that supports life's innate healing process. May the vital force be with you.